Hello everyone, welcome to Brenda's Brush Strokes and Bisque, painting live on Thursday, September 16th at 7 p.m. Central Time. And tonight we are starting our September box, our trick or treat box. And I, Cordy did open the box so that I could base coat these before we started tonight. Um, you got the box. Huh? You got the box. Well, I don't know what you did. I thought you were open bubble wrap. I guess we do have a box to open, so we'll start from the beginning. Um, so this is your box, how it would have come with the um, paper around it on top. And then you get the um, inventory sheet. And on the back is your two instruction sheets. And the paintbrush. And inside that we have our trick-or-treat bag with our extras and some little trick-or-treat candies. And then inside that we also had our ghost and our pumpkin wrapped up. So that is how your box comes. Um, it comes with tracking and shipping that you can um, follow that is emailed to you when they're shipped. Um, so we can open these up, I guess. And Courtney wraps them really well so they don't get broke. We had one box that looked like it got ran over this time, but the pieces survived. So we have our ghost girl. And then we have our pumpkin boy. Um, Courtney says everyone should be delivered except anyone that paid late or anyone that's on the west coast. Um, she says two. And we do have more boxes on Brenda's Brushstrokes and this.com until they're sold out. Then we have our Pumpkin Boy. So this is white bisque that has been fired to cone 04. So if you don't want to do acrylic stains, you want to use um, a different um, technique, you can do that too. Um, along with the acrylics, you can use whatever colors you want. For the class, we just paint what our sample colors were, which I do not have with me tonight. They're at the classroom. So I thought Courtney had them, but they're at the classroom, so we don't have them to show you, but she can probably post a picture. So this is our girl and boy pumpkin that we were going to paint. So I did base coat them um, when I got here with black. So I used our um, Duncan OS476 black, Duncan OS476 black, and now I do have a couple of white spots that I'm going to come back and touch up, which you guys want to make sure you touch those up because they will be, um, those little white spots will show up um, a lot, and they'll be very obvious, so you do want to touch them up. And for that painting, we just use a nylon brush when we're painting. So I'll dip that into my water and condition it. And then pat it on my paper towel. Um, so by doing that, that keeps the paint from going up into the ferrule and getting dried up down in the bristles. So I'm just going to touch up where I have any little white spots here. But the whole piece was painted black from head to toe, including the bottom, so that the bottom always looks nice as well. So I'm just going to make sure we got every, every little spot because there always seem to be some that pop up. Um, so the nylon brushes are what you have been receiving in your boxes since July. So those are the painting brushes and they're the round ones, um, which is what I'm using right now. Um, this one is a size 5. So it's not real big, but it's not real small either. And then the bottoms are painted as well, so your bottoms look nice. And I usually like to go on that inside rim where the thickness of the bisque is, but that's up to you if you want to do that or not. And then we'll take a peek at our boy to see if he's got any white spots hanging around here, which it looks like he does. So we'll touch those up quick. So I hope everyone had a good week since last week. It's been a busy week as usual. Okay, so we have our little pieces all nice and black, and you do want to look at them from the top down and the bottom up and sideways because those little 
white spots just seem to hide here and there, so it's a good good idea to look at your piece from different angles. Um, so I'll wash my brush out in my water, pat it dry, and we'll go back um, to our instruction package here. So usually, um, Courtney tries to put everything inside this package as much as she can. Um, so if you're not finding something, it should be in there. Um, so your brush was in there. So we have a size 4 nylon brush with this box. We don't? With, oh, a number 4. Sorry. It's just the inventory number 4. So it's the inventory sheet number 4. And the brush is actually a size 1. And you do want to take that plastic cap off and throw that away. That's just for shipping. And then you can dip it in your water and get the sizing out of it. Um, and then it's ready to use next time when you want to use it. So we have a size 1 nylon brush in our box this month. Then we have our painting instructions for how I did the girl with, si with um, one page. And then we have our boy with the second page. And number 2 is that we base or number one I'm sorry is that we base coated both pieces black and I did notice that on the boy we missed number two is to dry brush the face with the peach fuzz so we would want to do that um, up there as well so we will get our huh hmm so Mary says, please start with the boy. <laughs> Anybody else got any requests of which one we start with? Um, so we'll actually, I'll actually probably do both of them with the peach fuzz since they both get peach fuzz on their face. And on, on the back of your inventory sheet, back of your little um, package is the inventory sheet and the list of the colors that I use. But you can always use whatever colors you want to use and then any extras that we used as well. So we have our boy and our girl. Um, we're going to go with our Peach Fuzz OS492, Peach Fuzz OS492, um, and you want to give a good shake for your paint, like mine's been sitting here since last week at least, and we probably haven't used our Peach Fuzz in a while, so we're going to shake it up really well so we don't have any um, clear fluid on the top, because then it's separated, and we'll put a little pile of that on our foil or you can use your paper plate or whatever you want to use and then we have I'll grab guess I'll grab the boy and I want to pick a dry brush which is a bore bristle brush so this is a size 10 you can see that that's a very big brush for that little area so we don't want something that big um, so let's see what do I want I will probably go with this size 3 here because that um, I'm actually going to use the size 3 flat. So the bore bristle comes in flat and round. So I'm going to use the size 3 so it's not so big. And I will dip, tip the edge of my brush into the peach fuzz and then brush it out really well on my paper towel. Because uh, we are dry brushing and we don't want a lot of paint to go on at one time. We want it to go on fairly dry. So he does have gloves on, so we won't do the gloves, and he's got little leotards on, I guess, and little shoes, so we're basically just doing the faces. Um, so I'm just going to brush real lightly on his face and get a nice light coat of our peach fuzz on there. Each time I go to get our peach fuzz, I brush it out on my paper towel so that I don't get too much paint on my piece at one time. I try to brush back and forth across any of the crevices, so his mouth is going horizontal, so I'm going vertical across that. Um, kind of the same thing with his eyes here. Um, we have the hairlines and then the hair, so I do want to go um, vertical up and down across that as well. It's okay if you get the peach fuzz on the hair. The hair color will cover that up once we get to that. And as we come around to the side of the hair, we have to kind of change the angle of our brush. Because we kind of want to leave that black down in that crevice between the hair and the face. And then I kind of work from one area to the next and then just keep coming kind of back around. That way this area that 
I started with can dry and I'll go over to the um, right side now and as I come back to the left side that lets the right side dry so it's a slow process and you just want to build up your color um, a little bit at a time and I um, do tend to like to work on a couple pieces at one time because then I can get a layer on um, his face and then I'll actually go to the girl's face and let him dry. Um, if you can base coat your pieces ahead of time that helps with your dry brushing. The, um, the paint adheres a little bit better than um, dry brushing it as soon as you've base coated it or painted it out. So it looks like um, somebody posted that Courtney's birthday was for everyone to see so yep it was Courtney's birthday today and uh, oh she says not till 11:30 tonight though but I'm thinking she probably had her I don't think she had to wait for her birthday present till 11:30 tonight she says she did not she says everyone will be happy with her birthday present or um, Jason actually got her a brand new tablet for doing a MacBook. MacBook, okay. My dream computer. She says her dream computer. She has a MacBook to do our lives and videos Powerful and whatever she does. I don't know. So we have a nice layer now on his little face. It's just a, a base layer. So I'm actually going to lay him down and go to our girl. And we're just going to just keep doing the same thing with our brush. Um, grabbing a little bit at a time. If too much goes on, you want to brush out your brush like I just did there. You want it to go on just a little bit at a time. Um, so now our boy is drying while we're putting a layer on our girl. And it's okay if we get it on her hair and her um, cape, I guess you could call it. The, those colors will cover up, cover that up once we get to those. And just keep grabbing a little bit, brushing it out good. I'll come back to our piece and brush nice and light. And then just keep building it up. It does quite take a while. It's not a fast process. Dry brushing is usually not a fast process. Um, you could wet brush it as well. It's just um, pretty much the same process, but um, a lot, a lot more paint in your brush. Um, you could also paint them out and antique them. You could paint them out and um, leave them the way they are. That's There's more than one way to do these guys, so it's totally up to you what you want to do. Um, we just paint them on the Thursday Lives the way the samples were painted. And that's how the instructions were um, typed up as well. So now she's got a nice little layer on her as well. And again, I just go from one side to the next side, let that other side dry and then just keep going around and around um, so a lot of people are not sure at what point is enough so at um, this point I can still see a lot of black through my peach fuzz so that's not enough so we need more um, so we have a question from Marianne if you don't have peach fuzz would you what would you compare a color to another color um, so peach fuzz used to be angel flesh they just Kind of change, change. You just want a flesh color, so whatever you want your flesh color to be. It could be ivory. It could be cargo pants. Um, there's salmon. Um, just a nice um, skin color. Just whatever you want your skin color. Um, if you want them darker, you could use like a light brown. Even it, it really depends what you want their skin color to be. So hopefully that helps. So we're at our boy now. So we're gonna build up his peach fuzz and I probably wouldn't use white because you really don't want him, want him to be stark white just any any flesh color that you, that you have should work so we're just building up our peach fuzz and again we can still see our black through our peach fuzz when we we really just want the black left down in the crevices so we just keep building it up a little at a time and 
and going from one side to the other side. Um, if it gets a little shiny like it did right there, then my brush was a little bit too wet. And I'll just let that dry and come back and um, build it back up and it'll be okay. So let's see, do we have some more questions going on here? I should take a look at our stuff. What brush are you using for this? Huh? What brush are you using for this? Um, I'm just using a Royal um, size 3 um, boar bristle or hog bristle brush. It's a natural bristle brush. Um, it's a stiffer brush than the nylon painting brushes. Um, usually a dry bristle brushes or dry brushes are a boar bristle brush, meaning a hog, H-O-G, um, type of hair. And it can come from different parts of the hog. So some, some of them will be really soft. Some of them will be really stiff. It kind of, um, you kind of get what you prefer. Um, I have a couple ladies that like really stiff boar bristle brushes, and I have some that like really soft. I probably um, prefer the more softer ones myself. Um, so now we're just building up his layer, so now he's probably another shade darker or more covered than what he was. So we'll actually um, be putting him down and going to our back to our girl and let him dry a little bit more. Let's see what else do we got. So we'll just keep doing what we are doing, just dry brushing the little faces. Again, I'm starting, you can start wherever you want, but I'm starting on the left side, and then I kind of just work to my right, um, get the right side, and then go back to the left side. If there was other um, skin flesh areas, I would do those too, but we, we just have the faces on these two pieces because they do have the gloves on. Um, so I picked the faces to do because the area of the face on both of them is lower than the hair or deeper than the hair and deeper than the clothing. Um, it's kind of the same on both pieces. That way when we do the hair, if we would do the hair first, when we do the skin, the skin color would get on the hair. So that's why I tend to do the deeper or lowest area first. Um, that's kind of my my how I do it and every everyone has their own way to do it so just really do do it what works for you and try different try different ways if someone else is doing it differently I mean there's no no rule that says you can't try it you just do what works best for you but I, I do like to start with the area that's the the lowest or the deepest and on these guys um at this area right here, it'll be the face because the face is lower or deeper than the coat and the hair. So hopefully that makes sense when you're starting um, what area to pick. Um, so we have a question of dry brushes are only used for ceramics. Um, I mean, I don't know, you can use them for other stuff too if you're dry brushing on wood or something with acrylics. Um, they do have like stencil brushes that people use to stencil on walls and things. Those those are blunt ended um, brushes, and those really don't work for dry brushing. I've had people try to use those, and those because they're um, like the the round brushes are rounded, they're dome shaped, um, where a stencil brush is just a straight straight across, and that doesn't work well for dry brushing so you really do want dry brushes for dry brushing um, but you can use them for other things you probably wouldn't use them for um, like painting out your black because it's they're stiffer they're probably going to leave um, brush marks more um, but if you're doing say you had a wood cutout of a little ghost girl you could base coat that and then come back with your dry brushes and dry brush over that it don't have to be on a ceramic piece So hopefully that helps answer that. Now we can see we're getting more color to her face, but we still have a lot of black coming through. It's real blotchy or spotty on the cheeks. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so that, that's not enough yet. That's kind of 
a point where a lot of people think they have enough. Um, um, so she says, what is the name of the dry brush? They're just called dry brush. Um, I mean, what's the, it's a, this particular brand is a, is the brand is Royal and Langnickel. And it's a series 355, which is a dry brush. The rounds are 355. So the round, the round series is 355 and the flat series is 455. Um, every, every company is probably going to have different, um, numbering or whatever on them um, I'm not sure if we have them on our web page right now or not because we're um, waiting for um, the new ones to get in and we need to order so we'll actually be upgrading to the what's called an interlock bore bristle brush it's a little bit better quality um, so we're, we've been waiting for those to arrive so that we can order them Um, so we have a question, do I prefer the flat? Um, it really depends what I'm dry brushing as to which brush I prefer. Um, I, I just picked the flat because I couldn't find a size 3 round in my um, in my tray, but I would use a flat or a round for this because it's a, it's a nice area. I like the rounds or the flats. Um, when I have little areas, I can either use the wide part or I can turn it on its edge and use the narrow part. So it really depends what I'm, what area I'm dry brushing as to which, if it's a flat or a round that I pick. Um, for this bigger area, a flat or a round would, would work. Um, so it, it's not really a preference over one or the other completely. It kind of depends, like, the right tool for the right job. Um, so we have a question by Janet. What brush do you use for your base coating? For base coating, we use nylon um, nylon brushes. Or you can use a um, natural hair brush, but actually the acrylics do better with the nylon the nylon brushes. And it's just as, um, and you can use a round or a flat again. Um, I just use the round because the round is what we've been putting in the box as your extra. Um, so I know you guys have the round brushes. Next year I'm hoping we can do a flat brush. Um, I just like to use flat brushes too sometimes for certain things, especially like painting leaf leaves when you're doing more detail work um, or big big areas. A, a nice big flat brush works works nice too. But usually for acrylics, when you're base coating or painting out, you're going to use a um, nylon painting brush. So we're just working on our peach fuzz here and building up our color. You can see we have still a lot of black coming through this yet. And we really only want the black down in the the crevice, like around his face, around his eyes, in the in the mouth, um, between his face and his shirt or his pumpkin collar here. Um, the black is really just our shading. If you're doing a lot of like it's called brush stroke work where you're um, like last week we painted the um, gourd with the scene on it. Um, I actually prefer the natural like the sable brushes for doing that versus the nylon brushes. Um, however, the sable the sable natural hair brushes do cost more than the um, nylon brushes. Um, so we're gonna put our little boy down and we're gonna go to our girl. So look, what else do we have? So Kim likes the brushes in the box. That's good. Um, Wanda says, do you have any of the Sweet Tot Thanksgiving and Christmas? Um, we don't have the Thanksgiving Sweet Tots today, but we may possibly have them by next week. We're, um, got, um, we got um, a big big pallet of molds coming, so we're, we're going to have... Um, We'll have lots of stuff. <laughs> lots of stuff's going on here. So um, we also have, I think, sixteen new inserts, um, which I didn't have time to take a picture of those. Courtney, to give you the numbers, we'll have to do it tomorrow. And then we have new things um, that the inserts go on or in. 
Um, I can't even think of what they all are. Um, like little containers. You picked them out. The little box with the lid. Um, there's a little box with a lid. It's like a three inch oval. A photo frame. Um, a photo frame. Wasn't there another address thing too? Yeah, and then a patio. Uh, like a patio um, candle where you can it's called, it's called a patio candle where you can like put a vase. like a vase where you can put like the um, citronella in it with a with the wick. So we do have different containers that the um, inserts can go on, and we have 16 new inserts coming. So we'll we'll hopefully have those um, when we have our live next, next week. Next yeah, because we we'll have our extra sale next Thursday or our after party thing. I'll have all the new um, and Courtney will get Thursday. that all rounded up by then, and I'll, I have to get it poured and fired. I'll have to um, take them home and pour them tomorrow. Um, so let's see. As far as the sweet tots, oh, we got to go back. Gail says large pumpkins are small, happy ones are spooky ones. Um, um, so that's the, the October box you're talking about, yeah. right? So the October box is pumpkins. Oh, yeah, um, you guys haven't seen. You guys have probably seen lots of posts about these pumpkins. Um, so when you, um, so when you see them, I think you'll be really happy with them. Um, there's two pumpkins, and then we have other ones that you can add to your box as well. Um, we'll have those on Thursday. I clean those, and they're actually in the kiln. Um, they fired this afternoon, so I'll be getting that stuff to Courtney probably Saturday. Um, so I'm just building up my. Um, peach fuzz on my little girl. You can see that our we're getting to where our black is just around her face, in her eye line, in her mouth. Um, her face, the flesh is actually very covered with the with the um, peach fuzz. It's not very spotty and splotchy. So I'm trying to hold it up closer so you can see that it's very um, kind of a very even coverage on there. It's not um, spotty. And then our black is just down in our crevices. And I'm just patting real, real lightly on my um, piece, just kind of building up that um, peach fuzz layer so it's nice and even. So actually her face is looking really well here, so I can compare her now to him. So you can see that you can still see the black through him. Um, so we're going to go back to him now. So that's just to give you an idea of how far you go, because a lot of people um, kind of quit before they have enough. Um, they like to quit at this stage where the boy is at. And as Amanda says, just a little bit more. Uh, yep, you're 100% right on that one. <laughs> That's where we go. <laughs> um, so now we're going to go back to our boy, and we're just going to keep grabbing our peach fuzz. and just. Uh, I'm brushing fairly lightly. I'm not like really burning it down in there or rubbing it in there really hard. Um, I just like that light, light layer, and you just keep building it up. Kind of doing a, a C stroke or a backwards comma. Um, I do tend to like that versus brushing the straight back and forth, and that's just a personal preference. I think it helps um, kind of blend that paint down a little bit. Um, let's see what else is going on. We do have a Clay Magic palette that um, shipped actually this morning, and it's arriving already tomorrow at our surprise. Oh, wow. Um, they picked it up this morning, and it's That's crazy. Um, it's arriving tomorrow, which is really good because usually there's trucker problems, and it's I didn't expect it till Monday or Tuesday at the earliest. Um, so we do have all the new gnomes on that palette, except for the large uh, Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus. Otherwise, we did get all the new gnomes from the last release, as well as um, what else did we get? They won't be able to order them until the November box. Uh, so. Um, our November and December box is clay magic molds. Um, the new gnomes won't be available until those molds get dry, so it'll probably won't be until your November box. It will be on the website. And it'll be on your web our website where you can go in, add it to your box, and pick um, pick up at store, which is just a workaround, so that you don't get charged shipping. Unless Courtney changes something with that, and it was just for September. I'm not sure we didn't get to talk about that. Um, seems to be the only workaround that I 
Um, so she thinks yeah. that's the only workaround. So it, it should be that if you're going to add stuff to your box. Um, you, you, you just use pickup at store as it's just an option as a workaround so that it doesn't charge you extra shipping on your box. Um, but it makes it really handy for her to know what who wants what and then she can just print out your order and um, bubble wrap it and have it ready to go when it's time to ship. So, um, and then you do get a um, email that your box, your extra is ready for pickup at the store, but just ignore that. That's just part of the um, workflow of the, of the computer um, software, but um, just ignore that. It's just, it will be coming in your box. Um, it's just, that's how we had to do the workaround um, to get the, get it to not to charge shipping. Huh? So yep, otherwise Courtney has to um, go through the process of refunding your shipping and then um, that just makes a whole nother mess and people don't know why they're getting shipping back. Um, but if you just pick pick up at store, it will not charge you shipping. Um, you have to be a boxer getting a box to get that. Um, so if you're not a boxer, you, it's not going to work. Um, and Courtney will know that. Um, she's got a list of everyone, so... And it probably won't let you do it either, so, right? So, um, so we're just continuing away here with our peach fuzz, and you can see he's getting um, to look more like the girl. His black on his overall flesh is going away, and his, um, it's just down in those crevices. And I just keep working my way from one side to the next and, and back around and building it up. Um, I, I don't know. I have to check the email. Um, so I did order the tinsel the tinsel glitter um, that Clay Magic used on the um, gnomes in their flyers, but it hasn't. I haven't received it yet, and it's been two weeks already. So I gotta um, check into that. It didn't say it was out when I ordered it, so I don't know what happened. We're just building that peach fuzz up so he's got a nice smooth complexion here. And it's not spotty with black all over it. We just have our black down in our crevices. Well, let's see what else. We have the, the new truck insert that they came out with. Um, we got the Rudolph gnome and the gangbusters um, to go with him. We also have the three Mako um, gnomes coming and the um, reindeer gnome as well. Uh, Michael Har Harbridge got that for us, so we'll be getting that from him once it's here. And hopefully our jolly tree that we've been waiting on. Oh, and you found the fence, right? Um, yes, I did I did find a fence for the um, Sweet Tots Halloween stuff. Like so the I, actual one. Yeah, so I have been pouring that. Um, so I'll get that to you. That's in the kiln too, Courtney. And the base for it. Um, yep. Yeah. The bait the fence will stand up without the base okay. too. So we're just working our peach fuzz on here and getting him a nice, smooth, pretty complexion. Going from one side to the other. So now we'll um oh, Denise has skunks outside. Oh boy, that's not good. I noticed there were a lot of um, dead possums on the road today coming down here. So I'm looking there. They're both looking pretty good. I see she's got a little bare spot under her chin here. So we're going to come back and touch her chin up a little bit. Um, so they look they look pretty good now. He, he's a little pale over here, yet he's got some black coming through over on this side. So we're going to give a give a little bit more. I have been pouring more of the cats and the... Um, Pros as well, but we're still probably going to be limited on those because you only can pour so many in the month and the molds get wet. Um, there probably is a Robert Roger Rabbit, but I've anything that's um, trademarked like that, we, we don't grab it when we're looking. It just can cause too many problems if the wrong person um, Finds out you have it and you ain't supposed to have it, so we we stay away from any of those trademark things. Okay, so he's looking pretty good now. 
So we'll come back and look at her one more time. She's looking good. Okay. So let's see, we got the peach fuzz on both of them. So we'll go and I'm actually gonna wash that brush out because I'm not probably not gonna have to use it anymore tonight. So number two on him is to dry the pump, dry brush the pumpkin and hat rust. Um, so we'll go to our Duncan Rust OS454. Um, this is only two pieces, but they do take quite a bit of um, painting to get them where they go. Mary says, hey, I think I figured out dry brushing. <laughs> you need to talk out loud. Oh, Mary, you're too funny. What would we do without you? So we have our Rust OS454. And we'll get a little bit of rust. Um, so now we're gonna. I'm gonna look at my pumpkin, and he's a pretty big area. Um, it's a lot bigger area than our um, face, so we can go to a little bit bigger brush. We still probably wouldn't want to go to a, like a size 10. That's probably still going to be too big. Um, so I do have my size. Um, that's an eight here. I wish I had a five. No, a five round. How come I don't have a five round? It's an eight round. Five flat. Oops, yeah. I'll just go to five flat. I just kind of like the f the five is more appropriate to the size um, to go with like a one is. Um, so if you look at this size one, I like that. What you could do it. It's just going to take forever to do it. So we're we're going to go in between the one and a ten and go with a five. Um, so I'm just going to dip into my rust, brush out on my paper. Okay, Cordy found the wrong one, so that's all right. We got the um, rust in the um, in the brush now. So I did do his little collar in green, and his sleeves in green, and his little pants in green, and his little pumpkin top in green. So we look, and we have our lines going down um, as far as his pumpkin. Um, I do like to start on the back then. So if I do have too much paint in my brush, my big gob is on the back and not on the front. Um, so I'm going to brush across those pumpkin sections instead of brushing with them. If I brush with them, it's going to um, fill in, and we don't want it to fill in on that crevice. We want to keep that black down in that crevice. I lost my tablet, Courtney. Um, so I'm going to brush, just keep brushing back and forth. Again, I started on one slide, and I'm just going to work my way around. Um, that way this back can dry while I'm working to the front. You don't want to like complete one area at, at one time because it's going to get too wet on you and it's going to smear and it's not going to take the paint. So you're going to want to start in one area. Um, so like I started on the left side and you can see I'm working my way around to the front. And that way that where I have been is drying. Okay. Well, we didn't need anything out of it yet, so. Um, so we're going to just keep dry brushing here. Um, so the main lines are going up and down. Once I get to where his legs and pumpkin meet, I'll actually, instead of going um, horizontal, I'm going to go vertical so that I can kind of let that black um, crevice where the legs and the pumpkin meet. So you do kind of change directions as you're as you're going. Same with up here by his collar, you kind of got to go up and down also. So we're just brushing back and forth nice and light. Um, if it goes on real wet and shiny, it's too much, you want to brush out your brush on your paper towel or your um, paper bag or whatever it is you're using. Um, so now we have one nice coat on, on the pumpkin, and even though it looks kind of ugly, that's what we want. We're going to just um, go to his shoes actually next, because I kind of do all my rust areas now. Um, so we'll get the rust on his. And I use the rust under the orange as the kind of a the darker shade of color. You usually want to use two or three shades of color on your pieces. It just gives them more dimension. And then you want to come on to the bottom and do the bottom as well. 
And now we'll do the back of his shoes, his little slippers or whatever they are. So the slippers are are higher than the um, little leggings, but we'll just be careful when we do those. You could have done the leggings first, but I kind of wanted to do a bigger area first. So it really it really depends what you like to do. So I tend to go from the face to a bigger area, or from the flesh areas to bigger areas. And then we'll come and get his pumpkin top with his um, rust. And I won't do the stem. We'll let that for the whatever color we used on that. Again, I'm brushing across those crevices, not with them. Brushing that brush out really well after I get some paint in it. And then just working our way right around. And I just keep turning him. And just keep brushing back and forth till there's a nice layer on the whole pumpkin lid. Um, so now here, here with this little area, instead of going with my flat brush wide, I can turn my flat brush on its edge and get into that little area between the stem and the hand. So that's kind of why I kind of like, I do like the flat brushes more and more. I've been using them more and more. Um, they just seem to be handy that way. You can put them on their edge and use them the edge way as well as the wide way. Okay, so now we have our pumpkin with our first layer. We have our shoes with the first layer. And then his top, so now we're going to come back to his shirt, the pumpkin shirt part that we started with. And we want to get a nice layer of our rust on there, just like we did with his face. We don't want all this black coming through. We just want our black down in our those deeper crevices. That way our orange will cover nice. Um, if you put your orange on there now, it's going to be very splotchy looking, so you don't want, you want to have your rust um, looking as good as what your orange will look. So let's see what's going on. We're caught up. Does everybody, uh, anybody have theirs painted yet? I don't know if I've seen maybe one. Were there any pictures of painted ones yet? Um, so you guys can always feel free to paint them different colors. I, I just do the class with the colors that the samples were painted. And we're just going to build up our rust here. It's okay if it gets on his little bag. That's okay. The That color of that will cover that up. Um, so I guess what did we should ask Cardi, what did she do for her birthday today? Courtney helped with the neighbor that's, um, they have an elderly la neighbor lady that's moving out of state, so she helped with that. She's a 92-year-old widow. Um, she thinks she's a 92-year-old widow. She is a widow, for sure, yeah, and she is in her 90s. Um, she's moving um, to be by her daughter in Georgia. Um, so they're... We haul out of the basement. She helped the daughter, her daughter, um, unload the basement, but of course her daughter can't be very young either, right? Well, they're tired. Yeah, they're retired. So. so that was nice that they did that. Oh, and his birthday too. Oh, we got another birthday? Oh, look at there. Well, happy birthday to Kim. Let's see, and um, Clara's came today. So, okay, so that's good. Um, when you guys get your boxes, try to um, open them um, sooner than later. So if something would be broke and Courtney needs to do a um, claim with the Postal Service that she can do that early versus later, um, like you wouldn't want to do that like six months later. So try to open your boxes when they come just in case something is broke. I mean, we've had really 
She does a great job with shipping, but once in a great while, we do have a broken piece. I think Wanda had a broken piece, so Courtney will be taking care of that for you, Wanda. Um, so we're just building up our rust here. Um, one of our boxes looked like it um, got rode over and backed over by the truck, but I guess I <laughs> um, nothing was actually broken. It so that was a miracle if you'd see I the box. No idea how. <laughs> I have no idea. How. So it. Um, literally look crushed. Oh, yeah, it, it looked crushed. I don't know what they did with it. It looks like they ran it over is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, missing a tire mark. <laughs> um, but it stuff wasn't broke, so that was good. Um, so now I moved to my little feet here, his little shoes, to let our um, pumpkin body kind of dry. And we'll get our feet rust. And I just did those with the rust to kind of go with the um, orange pumpkin color. And he's kind of dressed up like a pumpkin guy. Huh? Amanda's kids call her at work to let her know what pumpkin Oh, your kids call you Amanda? <laughs> oh, that's too funny. You should be able to track it with your tracking if you can um, check your email. Some of you came UPS. Oh, then they, they don't still, have tracking? They, yeah, they still get an email with um, tracking. You still get an email with tracking, she says. So um, so I am trying to get down in, in this little area between where the two boots meet, um, just so it's not too black in there. Um, so these guys won't go real fast. I mean, there is a lot of painting on them to do. Um, so we need some more rust. So it should probably take all four classes to do these. Um, next month's class will probably just take one and a half nights. Um, so I'm kind of planning planning ahead oh, yeah. um, to do a couple extra things on extra pumpkins. And um, we have a Halloween party. And we have a Halloween party, yep. Just extra bonus um, um, so the, it, those... The pumpkins are going to go really quick, um, so we'll definitely have extra um, freebie classes next month, too. Um, so you may want to get extra pumpkins if you can, if you want to, um, yeah. Well, no, I was going to do other pumpkins a different way. Um, I was going to do like a full leather thing, full leather look on one of them, on, some, on, a, on a pumpkin, not one of them, but... Mm -hmm. Um, I'll try to get that all done by next week for samples. And then maybe do the crackle technique on one. I don't know. We haven't done that in a while. So let's see. We um, have his little feet done. So I'm going to come up here underneath his little butt. Looks like I kind of missed that a little bit. Um, so that looks really wet and shiny, so that tells me that, that my brush is too wet. i got to brush that paint out a little bit. And then I usually um, try to brush it a little bit, but if it's too shiny, you got you just have to let it dry and, and come back and work at it later to build it, the rest of it up to that level. So we'll kind of let that now and go to his hat. So we'll get some more paper towel and brush out my brush here. So Gail says, is that crackle technique with the glue? Yes, Carrie, it is. Um, and the other one, I think, is going to be a leather technique where we'll use the um, paint and then tissue paper, torn and crinkled, unless I um, find something else really kind of unique to do. I mean, if you guys know something you want, you want me to try, post away, I guess, so we know. Um, we didn't show next month's box yet. We'll be doing that next week, Thursday. Um, they're in the kiln right now, cooling off. I fired them today. Um, I actually didn't leave my house till 5.30 when the kiln shut off. So it's kind of a rush to get here. But I did see that the trees and the grass and leaves are really changing color since last week. It's kind of crazy. Um, so I'm just coming up on doing my pumpkin top here now. You can see it's getting uh, more and more rust with less black. The black is... Um, getting so it's just down in those creases, and that's exactly what we want. I'm turning my flat brush on its edge to do the little area between the hand and the pumpkin stem. Um, you could always, if you're using a bigger round brush, you could always switch to a smaller round brush for that little area. 
Um, so let me see. What do we got? Have we seen next month's box? How many pumpkins? Um, I don't think Courtney's going to know how many pumpkins will fit in the box until she sees it. It's kind of kind of depend what you order. Um, yeah, we have um, all different sizes. Um, we have a set of three pumpkins that are different sizes. We have um, a large, actually a large pumpkin that kind of goes with with the box pumpkin. And then there's two other smaller shaped pumpkins as well. Um, so I think you guys will really enjoy um, the box because it's a, it's definitely fall a fallish thing that you can decorate with because pumpkins seem to really be um, kind of in. Oh, Cardi says she would display them, you guys. She don't display anything. So. <laughs> um, so let's see. Where are you losing daylight? We certainly are. I can't remember. Are you a decoupage person? Um, so I haven't done the decoupage in the box stuff, but um, that leather technique that we're going to do do on an extra pumpkin is sort of like the decoupage. It's just that it'll be um, you can do it with decoupage or you can do it with your paint, and we're just going to do it with our paint, and it'll be plain tissue paper paper and not a um, printed printed one. It's just to give it a leather look. A different texture to go with the other pumpkins that are in the box. Um, so now I did turn my little boy kind of upside down. Um, so we have the the little thickness of our pumpkin head and I don't want that completely black. Um, so I want to kind of brush some of my rust on, on that very rim. Um, so there's a nice gradual shading and um, so you can see here where I didn't do this we have a, a really sharp line where our black and our rust meet and I want something uh, I want it more gradual, so I do have my pumpkin boy upside down, and I kind of have my brush up on its end so I can get down in that little um, lip a little bit. Let's see. Denise says she can see it coming to life. Yep, I, it's kind of cool how they just come to life, isn't it? Um, so we're just going to work our way around our little pumpkin um, lid here just so that that rim isn't completely black let's see yep the decoupage yep I said I usually don't do the decoupage um, we haven't done it in the box um, the leather technique is a little bit similar to the decoupage in that we won't need the Mod Podge but we'll be using our paint to do that and that'll be on just an extra technique um, it's not going to be on the box pumpkins because they have their own um, texture and we don't want to mess that up by covering it up. Um, so I'm just getting my my rim of my pumpkin lid here so that that's not completely black. Um, that's why my little guy is upside down here standing on his head. Um, so now I have a really shiny white black spot there so that got too wet on me. I'm going to let that um, dry and come back to the front now. So when you get those shiny Shininess like that, your um, your paint was too wet. Um, so we'll just come back to the top and let our bottom rim dry now. So let's see. Courtney's excited for next month. Yeah, yeah that, that's kind of unusual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, maybe we'll set. have you painting yet. Oh. Or purple. Or purple. I was going to do aqua and light light turquoise and dark turquoise and navy. Burgundy too. So I guess we'll have to see what you have for colors or what you can get before I decide what colors. Um, so I'm just building up our rust a little more so we don't have black, too much black coming through our rust. Um, the black is just down in, the, in any little crevices. And it's a pretty... Um, heavy coverage or a smooth equal coverage of our rust on our pumpkin lid here. Um, you can see it looks very different from his body. Um, so we'll go back to his body now. Let's see what else is going on. Looks like you guys don't have any comments going on. See I did get another shelf built in the storage unit last week. Um, got the nativity set sorted through. They're on the shelves now, except for some random ones. I think they'll have to go in the 
parts section until we get everything logged to see if they um, belong somewhere. Um, been pouring in the garage, which is great. Can't wait for the kilns to get out there. That'll be our next thing. Um, no, it's just nice. I've had the, um, Cordy asked if it's cool or hot out there. I mean, I open the garage door and I have that screen on there. It keeps the mosquitoes out because the mosquitoes are terrible. Um, it gets dark early, so it does cool off and get damp early. So, I, I mean, I used to leave it open until I went in at 10 or 11, but now I kind of close it at 8 once it starts getting later because it just gets real damp. Um, it was pretty good today with the wind. Cordy asked if the humidity is bad out there. Um, the humidity was bad because it was bad outside, mm -hmm. but it's a lot drier right now. Um, so the greenware actually dried really good today. Um, otherwise, um, my greenware wasn't drying. It was taking it three to five days to dry, and um, what I took out yesterday actually dried pretty good overnight. Night. So we have a question. I have a pumpkin. I want to do a cream color. What color do I need to base coat it? Um, I'd probably use a, a light, a, like a medium brown, and then dry brush it with ivory. Um, yep, or buttermilk. Yep, from Mako. But I, I wouldn't use a really dark brown. I'd use like the medium brown or a, a mocha type color. Yep, or you could color wash it instead of base coating it. Um, so we're just building up our rust on our little fella here. You can see he's slowly coming, slowly getting color to him, like he could be a pumpkin after all. Um, hauled a few of the home, molds home that we haven't been, um, kind of haven't been able to get to, to pour even. Um, pour the lynx, uh, the big clay magic reindeer. Um, the trout, the Doc Holiday trout, pike, and um, bass. Um, port a colt, a Seattle colt. It's a baby horse that's probably like 12 inches. Um, poured some Halloween pieces too, so I'll get those cleaned and fired to Courtney to. Um, I think those are small enough to add to the box if you guys wanted. It was a couple ghosts. One One's like six inches tall, holding the word boo. Um, what was the other one? One says trick or treat. I don't think I don't know if you've seen that one. So it's easier to get to stuff now that we got stuff on shelves instead of just piles on the floor. But I don't know how long that's gonna stay like that. Um, so we're just dry brushing our rust here. Um, it says one palette, but it's going to be a, a big one. Yeah. Um, we kind of overspent the budget on Clay Magic, you guys. She went for broke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, we're getting the ATV that will fit in the, or the UTV, whatever it is, that will fit in the back of the pickup truck. Um, what else did we get? We got a new Mr. and Mrs. Frankie. We got a new Woodland Animals, because you guys seem to like that, and those molds are getting worn. And um, a new jingle because jingle was getting worn. Um, a welcome Santa because I try to add one welcome um, to the order. Um, Cordy didn't know I did that, but um, oh, I thought you knew about the UTV. The boys wanted it, and Mary wanted it, and a bunch of them wanted it. So. see what else is in there. Oh, we got, um, yep, we have the Peter Pilgrim, and I don't know what her name is. We already have the corn shocks. We have the new big pilgrims. I think they're too big to ship, though. I don't think you're going to want to ship them. They're tall. Yeah, they're tall and skinny. Um, we got um, a little mantle tree for the classroom for a class. I can't think of what we got. It was a lot. All the new gnomes. Yep, all the new gnomes. And all the 
Yep. Yep. Oh, and the sunflower, the sun, the from the um, release before we got the sunflower gnomes with the stacks, the sunflower gnomes in the truck inserts. Um, yeah, so we'll actually have a lot of stuff for you guys for November. Because um, those molds, even though they're coming to tomorrow, they're going to be soaking wet and they, they're going to have to dry. Um, without the kilns being in there, there's not going to be a lot of extra heat to help dry them out. Um, I might have to go buy that dehumidifier sooner than later, I guess. Let's see what else we got. Um, so Courtney says lots of Donna fall and winter inserts are coming. Um, I'll actually be grabbing those tomorrow to pour. Um, those are dry and I will be able to pour them. We don't have to wait for those to dry. Um, those we'll have next Thursday because you guys have been kind of liking the um, Donna's inserts and we were able to get our hands on some. So... We're just dry brushing our guy here. We had it, um, his feet are looking pretty good. There's mostly rust and not um, the blacks just in, in the crevices. Uh, but our pumpkins kind of got black coming through our rust yet, so we got to build that up some more yet. Not sure when the Mako gnome will get here. They should be coming to. Um, they will probably have to dry as well. Huh? Those last um, yeah, Mako comes a little bit drier than Clay Magic, so actually they were a lot drier. Um, I did pour the koi fish from Mako that we um, got earlier this year that I just haven't been able um, to pour. Um, so we'll have a couple of those at, out at the classroom. Um, so there is new stuff going to the classroom too. Actually, quite a bit of new stuff. Those fish and um, the cut wood, wood, the whittled um, moose and reindeer and bear. I have those all poured too. And then the fin gnome, I actually cut bats out in his hat. Um, that's kind of for a class at the classroom. I don't. Do you ship fin or not? Finn with the sign. He's kind of big, yeah. Um, so we'll see. Maybe those little, the new little gnomes that we're getting, um, we'll be able to maybe cut bats out in those. I mean, the the gnomes are kind of pretty flexible. You can paint them different colors and do different things with them, even though it's the same piece. Okay, so our pumpkin's kind of coming along here pretty good. I'm actually going to go back to our um, hat because I can still see black coming through the main sections of our um, pumpkin slices. I don't know if the koi, koi fish are too big to um, ship or not. not. She's in Ohio, so let's see that. Um, the one is small, a little bit smaller than the other one, so... Um, so there has been rumor and talk out there that um, talc and slip is a problem, which um, we I did talk to my supplier um, the week before last week, and that, that's a true story. Um, we, we won't have problems. We have enough talc through December, because we, we had ordered in June to get us to the end of the year. And they, they are working on a, re well, they actually have it. They have a recipe for talc-free slip. And then the bisque will be white. Um, the other option is that um, some of the bisque, depending upon where you're getting it from, the slip, once it's fired, the slip, the bisque can be um, a buff, off-white, cream, yellow color. Um, ours should still continue to be white, although, although there is a price increase, so we'll have to see how that compares to getting the buff-colored slip. Um, I, I don't know that there's a recipe to mix your own for that, so that would 
change the price right there, so it still should be cheaper for us to mix our own. Um, so what happened is the talc mine in Texas was bought by a, and this was told to me by my our supplier, which was um, Evans, which is Don. Um, so the mine in Texas is owned by a ceramic tile, floor tile company, and they are not selling the slip, or the not the slip, the talc to other businesses. They are only using it for themselves. Um, so the ceramic industry does not have access to that talc anymore. And so Denise says, wow, that's really big. Yep, that's really big. Um, it's it's a big, big problem. No, oh, no, um, but, I'm talking about the koi fish. Oh, the koi fish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh sorry. Oh, she, McCordy must be given... I told her I have to hold them up to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the um the the koi molds were are really nice, you guys. Actually, Cordy could post a picture of them. I have two of them that I had done when when we couldn't get the uh, molds from Mako. Um so I had to order the bisque from the import place, but now they have the molds and I got the molds. Um but back to the the talc, that that's also a really big issue because there's only so many talc mines, um, the one that's in Texas, so that, that one's no longer um, accessible by the ceramic industry because it's the ceramic tile industry, um, a company owns it. And then um, Johnson & Johnson has three, but those are in different areas, and Johnson & Johnson is at, in a lawsuit with the feminine products. Um, so that, that opens another can of worms with, with their mines. Um, another option, um, per Don was that, um, you can get talc from China. However, then it has 120 days, takes 120 days just for it to get here on the ship. So that's another problem. Okay. But we should be, <laughs> um, but, um, we should be fine. Be, um, some, some companies are using the, the buff colored stuff where the, the bisque ends up buff colored. Ours is going to be a talcless recipe. Um, the recipe is a little different than what we were using, so we'll have to adjust that with whatever recipe they give us. Um, although the cost is going up. And then the other thing is we will have to fire to cone 03 instead of 04 um, to get that white bisque that everyone's used to. Um, so our from our end, you guys really shouldn't see um, too much of a difference. The, the biggest difference is, is, is if the price and the shipping just really gets out of hand. Um, so hopefully we don't have to make any adjustments with the um, with the box price. But hopefully it, it all kind of stays the same. So Elizabeth has a question. How will the buff color affect the paint colors? Um, not 100% sure. Um, other than like if you you have a piece of bisque and you want to put clear glaze on it, you're, you're, it's not going to be white. Once it's fired, your bisque will underneath is not going to be white. You're going to have to use a white glaze, which, I mean, that again increases your cost as well because now you're paying, um, you're going to have to buy a yellow, or not yellow, white glaze to have actual white areas on your piece where before you could clear glaze an area and, and fire it and then it would be white. Um, so glazing is probably the biggest, where the biggest notice will be. And then I, I don't know how it's going to, um, so if it's already a yellowish color and you put green glaze on it, is it going to be, is that going to change the shade of your green? I, I don't know. I'm sure the ceramic industry, the manufacturers will figure all that out for us. This isn't the first time we've had to go through this. Um, and they figured out because they, you know, they're they want to supply us with the supplies we need. So, um, as far as if you're still painting acrylics, it really shouldn't affect your acrylics. Um, for instance, we we base coated this piece black anyway, so it wouldn't matter if our bisque was a little bit buff colored. Um, it really isn't going to affect it because you're you're base coating it another color anyway. Well, be like with yellow. Right. Um. So it really shouldn't affect the the acrylic industry too much, I wouldn't think. Um, however, our supplier has a recipe that is talcless, and and the slip 
will produce white bisque as long as it's fired to cone 03. Um, so that's where that's how we plan to go at this time. I probably won't buy four pallets at one time. I'll probably just buy one pallet and try it and make sure it works and everything is cool. Um, unfortunately, it'll be in December when it's cold out, so I kind of like to get what we need for the whole winter, but um, we'll have to see. But it does make it challenging for the ceramic industry overall, that's for sure. So, but everyone will get through it and it'll all be fine. So that should be good. So I'm getting our rust on here pretty good. You can see he's each of our little sections of our pumpkins looking really rust. We just have our black down in our um, crevices. So. He's just about where he needs to be as far as his rust. Getting the rust a little bit between his little shoes here so it's not black down in there. Um, what are we doing on time, Courtney? 8 12. Oh, 8 12. So I probably wouldn't start with another color here tonight. Um, I would just finish with my rust, I think, and then we'll leave it at that and pick up at this point next week. Um, does anyone have any questions? Like, do you guys understand the whole slip thing? Because there's been um, posts about it. And I and, and I just thought instead of um, reading this and that, and he, sh he said, she, she said, I just called our supplier and, and talked to him, and he spent like 15 minutes talking to me, and, and I, I don't feel it's like a problem for us at all. So um, they, they have us covered, and I'm sure everyone else does too. It's just different loops to... Um, go through. I mean, COVID, COVID seems to be picking up. Um, they say the hospitals here are full, and so um, shipping can be a problem with things. When I, um, I've i seen posts about that there's plaster or plaster shortage, and the mold companies can't get plaster. Um, we got our molds from Clay Magic. When I talked to Julie there, she, she is stocked up on plaster, and plaster is not a problem for them. It was a while, a little while ago because of COVID. It wasn't getting made and shipped. And I mean, shipping with everything, I mean, not just ceramic stuff, but just overall, um, it's just a problem with COVID. So hopefully COVID don't um, like really go crazy here this winter, I guess. Um, but er everything is, I mean, from paints to brushes to um, we're hoping we can get no fire snow. That's the last thing we weren't able to get on our last order, right, Courtney? We could only get glittered no fire snow. Yeah. Um, so hopefully when we order, um, we couldn't get some of the glitters either. We couldn't get the Halloween glitters. Um, but, you know, a lot of that's just related to COVID and people not working and stuff not being shipped because there ain't truckers. But now here today, like our, our pallet of mold shipped this morning and, and they're going to arrive tomorrow morning, so... Um, they come from southern Michigan, and we're in central Wisconsin, so, like, not a trucking issue this time around, so. Um, so, let's see. We got a question from Sharon. Um, will we get a Technic sheet in our boxes anytime soon? I like seeing all the other, other items that match the box. So, we all, I only do the Technic sheets uh, at this time for the box pieces. She's talking about... Well, so the clay magic, we can get the original. Oh, yep. Yeah, so, um, so when we can't the um, so with the Donna molds, we are not able to get the Donna technique sheets. They don't make them anymore. Um, Donna molds are actually owned by Starlight Molds now. They just have the masters and make make the new molds. Um, clay Magic is an active company, and they do produce the technique sheets yet, and that that's just an extra we provide with the box. Um, and what, so when we're able to get the technique sheets from a company, we get them. But basically, Clay Magic is the only one that we're able to do that with at this time. Um, sometimes when we do, um, like the extra, we did the Scarecrow extra last month and the um, the painted Halloween scene. Cordy will post those on our Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bisque under the free resources pad. But I think I forgot to actually um, type those out and email them to her to put on there. Um, um, so we're just, we're still catching up a little bit from August with trying to get the, my garage done for winter and the storage unit um, done. And then getting the shop back on organized and new shelving up. 
Um, so if we're able to get new technique sheets, which is basically just from um, Clay Magic, we will we purchase those. They have to be purchased. They're not free. And then we add them to your boxes. So your November and December boxes will have them in there. But if you're working on any Clay Magic mold, you can go to Clay Magic's website and uh, pick your mold, um, say whatever it is, um, pumpkin, carved pumpkin. And when you get to the catalog page, they have the technique sheets to go with those catalog pages. They used to be at the bottom, but I did just see an email where it's been moved to the top of the page now. So you may no notice on Clay Magic that their technique sheets have moved from the bottom of the page to the top of the page. But you can download them right from there and print them from there too. You don't have to, um, you can get any of them. Every, every one they have is on there. Um, otherwise, for the box, we do purchase the colored ones. Um, so let's see, and, and sometimes, so Joyce got her Donna Technique sheets from Pinterest. Yeah, I um, yep, you can, you can find them, you can type in online, do a Google search, search to find them. Um, that is copyrighted material, so that, that would be against the law for us to print, print those um, and put them in a box for you guys. That, that wouldn't be kosher. Like those catalogs, I guess, from Clean Magic, we purchase. Right. So even like the ones from Clay Magic, we, we don't print them from Clay Magic. We purchase them. Um, for us to print them and put them in your boxes, would it, we would be breaking a copyright law, and we, we, don't, we don't do that. So um, hopefully that helps. But you can type in on the, on the Internet. You can find tons of stuff on the Internet. Um, but that's why we started putting our instructions in the boxes of how, we actually, how I actually painted your pieces because they don't have the... Um, flyers and then this is how I painted them which is probably completely different from the way Donna did them 20 years ago anyway um, so um, hopefully that helps you guys a lot a lot of people don't if you don't have internet so you're going to your cabin for the weekend you can take your um, your technique sheet that we provided or download load a past video and watch it where you don't have internet access to they can print Yep, you guys can. We can't. Yep, you guys can go on Pinterest or on Clay Magic and print yourself. It's just we as a business that that wouldn't be a um, appropriate business work to do. Um, so so we don't we per, we purchase the actual printed flyers and get them from Juliet Clay Magic. Um, but you guys can go on Clay Magic's site and print them out, or go on um, Pinterest or type in on the. Um, Google search if you can find them. You can you can print them. We we just can't print them and distribute them. That wouldn't be right. So, um, but that's why we do our own technique sheets and they're in the boxes. So hopefully that helps you guys out too and you enjoy them. It seems like everyone does. Um, anyone have any other questions? Uh, looks like Wanda had granddaughters exposed to COVID last week. Yep, I had a great nephew that um, possibly was too, um, but they're out. They're doing fine too. So. Um, Hopefully you guys enjoyed tonight's class, and we'll keep moving along with these guys. You can see they, they are kind of slow going. There are a lot of little detail work, but it's still quite easy. We just take it one step at a time. Um, we will have your uh, October box next week for you to preview. Um, Deborah says she loved the boxes. Thank you. Glad, glad you guys are enjoying them. We've done it for two years, and we're enjoying them, and it's fun to come up with different ideas and what to put in them and what to do. Um, so hopefully you joined your um, enjoyed your trick or treat bag. I don't know if you um, hopefully you guys open this up, but Courtney has any extras in in the little bag, and usually each month has its little theme, so it's trick or treat. So she got some spider bags for you guys. Um, a um, few different styles, she said, but they're Halloween, so we we actually bought candy, and you have a little candy in there. So if you're getting stressed when you're painting, you got some. Um, candy in there and we also have a little go um string that we'll make into a ribbon for our girl ghost and then we have a little container of um the black onyx glitter that we'll put on their gloves um we had provided the brush on glitter before or brush on sealer before so if you can use that or if you don't have that you could use a glue as well um, but there's always a little extra baggie with things in your um can, in your box to kind of finish off your pieces um, so I guess that's about is it. I have to wish Courtney a happy birthday and thank her for all her help with all of this because without her, all of this wouldn't be possible. Um, so thank you, daughter, for being a great daughter and partner here and working so hard to make this work.
Um, so hopefully you guys are enjoying it and we'll keep posting pictures and we'll keep updating you with what's going on and we will see you next week and enjoy your week in the fall weather before winter hits us. Um, so have a great week, everyone. Good night.